Hello everyone. Welcome to Fish Easy. We're going live on a Friday night and this is because we're going to not be able to go live at a regular scheduled time which is um, Saturdays. But uh, tonight uh, we're going to take a look at some of the most interesting developments in the fish room for the week because I couldn't let a live stream go by without sharing some of the progress. As you can see here, um, you're looking at the nice batch of uh, discus and this pair is taking care of the, um, the, the group very well. Now they weren't so successful in the beginning and that's what happens. Sometimes the uh, fish actually uh, eat the eggs or maybe they'll eat the fry. In this case uh, conditions were just right and they uh, seem to be doing quite well. So I wanted to make that update. Now um, just so everybody knows if you are on the replay crew please uh, take the time to just leave a comment at the bottom. I would like to um, uh, of course if you leave a comment at the bottom then that will be an opportunity for me to answer your questions or at least know that you uh, stop by. And uh, this is this is a uh, very interesting uh, development and we're going to take a look now at um, some of the developments in the fish room. Just unbelievable. The amazing um, amounts of spawns we've had this week in the um, in the um, RAM department. We might say RAM department. Hi Jeff, thanks for joining tonight. This is uh, uh, one of my uh, electric blue breeders. I don't have individual boxes for them or aquariums so I've just put the uh, four pair in here and it turns out that I've already had three spawns in the week and all from this tank. So they've all spawned and I've picked up uh, several batches coming up. So these are the um, parents and they're young young adults and I and I very impressed with uh, how they've come out I've selected these myself for for my own use thanks for the thumbs up and uh, appreciate it very much Jeff and also uh, I'm gonna take a look real quick here is the pair that spawned the last uh, this is two uh, black rams from Israel so uh, these are the the Danzig um, line of black rams and as you can see they are um, quite a nice pair actually this pair uh, I need to clean the glass of my tanks actually before I go online I got to remember to do that um, as it is I do remember to reboot my phone which is good but uh, this is the last pair to go down on eggs and uh, it's very easy to tell if if a pair has gone down on eggs. For example, if I stand here and the male and the female are up front begging for food, then I know, uh, for example, that this particular pair is in fact um, not gone down on eggs. If I look over here and I say, oh, well here's a female. And there uh, I see she looks like her egg tube is uh, protruding and no male in sight. That sometimes means something. Um, it doesn't always mean that they've gone down on eggs, they've spawned, but um, it sometimes means it because the male will be in the back and he's uh, well hidden in the back. So tonight I better check this uh, particular tank here. Seems like this tank is um, um, no male is here, so maybe he's either. Yeah, he's he's probably he he might swing over, but it's something we've got to check out on. And of course, uh, there's the other pair. This is the pair I'm really hoping to get a spawn out of. The uh, female is actually from um, what I believe to be the South African line of uh, black rams, and it's I do not believe it's from the um, Israel line. So crossing them uh, with the two. I'm anxious to see uh, if I'm able to get uh, more more blacks out of them than if I would. It seems as though the the babies that are coming up are um, well. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. It's very interesting to take a look. I just looking at the breeders right now, and here is another pair behind me. 
and this pair also went down on eggs earlier so we have um, a third pair I'm gonna have to count them oh by the way this yeah these these guys I think these these ones went on eggs too last night it was a pair in the uh, in this particular tank so German blues okay so coming over to the um, um, spawning rack or should we say the nursery rack um, you'll notice something amazing this week I have been struggling to come up with breeder boxes um, one two three across the top four five six seventy nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so I have thirteen boxes going I ran out of the uh, regular um, breeder boxes and I started using critter critter containers and these are critter containers they're not with overflow and I started turning them uh, lengthwise because I didn't have enough shelf room it's just it's just amazing so I'll, I'll express or share with you exactly why there's such a a bunch now uh, there's a lot of babies so many going on right now that I don't know what I'm gonna do but it, it's just amazing so look Jeff there's um, um, I'm gonna go through and show you first of all the oldest ones here in the nursery are German blues here German blues here and German blues down here okay now these German blues um, th this one there's a lot more in here than others Hello, Fish Tropic Canada. Welcome. Yeah, so the German Blues are... Um, this this one looks like... Yeah, they're all from different pairs. Even though this one is from a J. Uh, that's the J tank. And this one is also from a J tank. The little uh, mark tells me that uh, that was from the back of the tank. A different pair. So, these are only within... Um, oh, eight, these are eight days... No, two days apart. These two uh, and these um, are one day later. So <laughs> they're all about the same. So in the end, if everything goes right, they'll end up uh, being mixed together in the end and sold. So let's see, is that cover it? I also have breeder boxes for the, um, um, the Lucipinus. So you can see here, there's quite a few and they're growing very well. And they really clean up the um, baby brine shrimp so when these guys get baby brine shrimp uh, their box is clean within an hour and this uh, is another box with Lusa Pinus a little smaller I don't want to mix them because they're just a little too small I'm afraid that uh, they might get uh, chewed up on or eaten by the others who knows but uh, there is uh, quite a few oh and um, speaking of Lusa Pinus you know it's funny because uh, that that's two boxes for those but I also have another box over here, and only because, and you're not going to believe this. Um, yeah, look at this. This is what I'm now starting to use, and these are just um, nut containers from Costco. <laughs> so they got a wide mouth, and they're strong plastic. So now I'm using these as breeder boxes. I've already started using them, and uh, I don't know if you can see in here, this one, this one is is doing very well. I'll shine the flashlight so you can see what's in here, but look in the back corner. You see the fish? Believe it or not, believe it or not those, with the mop in there, you, it gives you the, the, the idea. Those are um, the Fricatus Rainbows and that's two weeks of mop and they've got quite a group in there and my little older ones are in the tank over here and they're about ready to... I could actually breed these if I put a mop in here I, I should they, these are I think breeding age and these are a little too young for breeder age but a few weeks of mops and look what happens you get a tank full of of these uh, rainbows these, these guys I don't know if you can see it now. Good, good shot. There you go. That's better. Now you can really see them. Um, there's quite a few in here. I can't count them. So, good number of uh, Fricatus rainbows. So I'm breeding them now and, and putting the mops in these. And I always put uh, a little bit of air. 
and the reason for the little bit of air isn't necessarily because they um, need to have lots of air it's just it keeps the the surface tension clear and allows oxygen exchange so whenever you have anything that it could be stagnant now here is lucipinus also very small amount very low uh, amount of water but I'm using this as a breeder box because I've run out of these are very tiny I don't think I can catch these on camera uh, from and I've also started using the leaf <clears throat> they really do well on the leaf so with the leaf inside it gives them something to hide under and they can go they can go back to um, darkness they like to be in the dark so that always is good now let's go back to what we have here in the breeder boxes I've just covered all the German blues and the Lucipinus now let's hit the electric blues so it looks like this is a huge batch of electric blues and uh, this is they've all hatched in fact you can see out of the whole batch I don't know if you can see this but there's just only uh, I'm telling you there's only like white eggs I see I can't focus on it let's try this see if I can focus this way there you go see the white eggs one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> now that batch there's only about eight eggs that didn't didn't hatch this is a tremendous this is from that tank we were just looking at the electric blues so at this point they are wigglers they're not free swimming just yet but at this stage I, I actually take this out and what I do is I just I just kinda jiggle I'm just jiggling and letting them all settle in as you can see there quite a few babies in the bottom so so I've just uh, cleaned them out and uh, it's just a couple eggs oh there's some on the side there that didn't hatch but there surely isn't many not many at all okay so but that's probably uh, in the hundreds so I'll um, um, sterilize that also um, yeah that's a huge batch now I, this is that electric blues from that tank and this is uh, pair number one okay and then pair number two um, also is only one day behind them so last Sunday pair number one laid eggs now this is pair number two so it's Friday so they're not quite swimming they hatched on Thursday and it's going to take another few days these are guys are going to go they're going to go lift off and probably by Sunday I'll have these these two so I'm just kind of jiggling the eggs and see what I got here so this is what I do to get them out I think yeah I think let me just take a quick look get them all sometimes they have sticky sticky heads but a nice nice little vi vibration there will remove any floating and get them out of there okay that's that's pair number two out of that same tank another couple hundred who knows how many exactly and then EX3 here's another um, here's another this was uh, the next day so it looks like the 2021 20, 20 this is 22 so actually these these are supposed to hatch today so let's take a look um, did they hatch I'm gonna get a flashlight they're, they're stuck still at the spot where the eggs are and these electric blues yes I do see movement and if you can see it there you go see the movement these are all hatching in fact the ones that are not going to hatch are, are like dark blue due to the methane blue the fungicide if you look closely they're all all wiggling Wow, another huge batch. So three huge batches of electric blues. That's going to be a bumper crop right there. Electric blues six months from now. I'll have six to eight months from now. I'm going to be selling uh, electric blues out the out the um, out the ears. Yeah, this is why I won't shake. These need to, they need to get this. They kind of fall off or jump off at a certain age. Okay. 
So that's three breeder boxes, three separate, uh, and it looks like they're all the same. They're all from uh, the same tank, actually. So those three breeder boxes, that's this one, this one, and this one, will eventually be combined into a tank. When they get ready to go into a tank, I'll pick a bigger tank and put them all together. There's no sense in, and I don't have to, I don't like to mix like gym blues, electric blues, or I don't mix them because it's too hard to separate in the end later. But even though you can see them different, obviously now let's go on to the last bunch of well that's up here so there, there's i forgot there's another german blue group right here from the j tank and this one hatched i think this one hatched this morning uh, this 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 box is kind of scratchy you can't see too well but they're just starting to lift up well they get off the eggs, so they just hatched. And there's a couple of them you see in the back, in the corner right about here. See right there? Those those have kind of like, if you've ever seen them, sometimes they give a, do a lift off and they go a little spiraling out. So they spiral out of the eggs and then sometimes they fall on the side. So, But most of them just kind of gently fall to the bottom. But if you look, those eggs, yeah. So those are German blues. And then here's the big news. Let's see. We've got actually one, two, three, four. There's four. One here. Let's look at the first group. Um, this is the first group of black rams. And these black rams uh, came out at, okay, 14. These, um, seven. This is a week. A week. They're, these are almost... These are going on to uh, going to be two weeks old. Take a look at these guys. These are all black rams. Now, something that that I notice now is if you if you take a look at these black rams, you're going to see it looks like not quite half of them. Look at that. Half of them are not black. So, because this is a this batch came from a cross between the Israeli black ram and an Iris, okay or a Danzig uh, uh, line of black rams, these were supposed. A lot of people have told me these produce gold rams. So it appears that maybe a little ha less than half of these are gold rams. So that's kind of a, a, a mixed blessing because you know the truth is I. I don't have any gold rams in the, in the fish room, and um, I can't get them in the area. It seems like they're very hard to find. So this one here is a little different. This is the L pair. In this particular pairing, um, I don't see the same issue. In this particular pairing, you'll notice that there's, uh, let's see if I can zoom in. There might be some lighter ones. Can you see any lighter ones? Yeah, I think I see some. Jeff, um, my fish room is being upgraded, and it has been for last few weeks. I haven't um, shown you the upgrade, but it's been busy and in the works, and even today I was very busy in it. So we're gonna have some, a lot of tanks for growing out these fish. And uh, I think probably in about a week we're going to have to, we're going to get to show it off because right now the tanks are are getting put in place. They're not even they're not even uh, finally situated yet. But this pair here is a cross between what I received was a, some rams from um, originating from Alberta. I'm not sure exactly where that is or what 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 they are, but if if it's true what I hear it's possible that these are from the South African line. And we'll prove it genetically as we go on. But it, just looking at the cross between the two lines, this one is doing super well. Now, another interesting fact. You, you, I hope you're sitting down for this. Now, in this particular case, the TDS, when the parents spawned, were something like 278. But I had used some uh, RO water on the other pair, and it was like they had uh, something like 68. 
And um, so what I'm learning or seeing so far is that TDS does not seem to affect the um, uh, fertility of these fish. And not like the case of the discus. The discus, it, it seems to be an issue. Um, at any time the TDS is too high, the spawns come uh, go white. They don't get fertilized. Here is the next one coming. These, these, this is a typical example of how rams, when they first start lift off and they first start swimming and they're eating, and they they will go to the surface and start floating at the surface, and they're at the floating at the surface stage. In another day or two, they'll be down like these, down in the lower levels and then uh, they won't go back to the surface. So at this stage, and they're just starting to eat, they've already been free swimming a day or two, I, I feed vinegar eels because the vinegar eels stay in the water longer and they go to the top. They have to go to the surface. They're always trying to go to the surface and so that's where the fish are. So I try to put food in for where the fish are. And they're either at the bottom and the top, but I always, um, tonight, like for example, just before I went live, there is uh, a batch of, um, baby brine shrimp here waiting for them. I'm going to feed them. And uh, this, these, these, this shrimp is 36 hours old. These eggs are hatched 36 in 36 hours. So these are newly hatched and I'm going to um, always put a little bit in here. Not a lot. When they're this young, they're not going to eat a lot and they're not even eating them. A lot of them are too big for their mouths. So um, I just put a little bit so they start getting used to it. But mainly I'll be feeding the vinegar eels and maybe a little bit of par paramecia if I put that in there. The fourth batch is the one I showed you at the beginning, uh, the pears. And this, this is batch N. And uh, do we, oh, what do we have, I haven't checked this one. Let me, let's take a closer look here. I don't know if, I don't know if we can see what's going on with this batch. Let me get the flashlight. I didn't think they hatched. They're supposed to hatch on Sunday. Okay, you know what that means? I'm going to tell you something else I've learned about these fish. So there's just eggs right now. There they are. Okay, so these are still eggs. And this batch has some purple eggs, or it's blue. And that's because of the methane blue. So it's obvious that uh, not all of them, there's no fungusing. I haven't experienced any fungusing on these, these fish. And uh, that's probably because I've had better success at not treating with heaters. And it seems as though keeping them at room temperature, which is maximum 80. So you see here, this is the maximum, maximum high and low. It gets down to 76, so it's t or high of 26, low of 24 in the last 24 hours. So it gives you an idea what's going on in this room. These fish are at eye level, so it's about the same level as this, this meter. So it's at 80, 80 in here right now. So the, the boxes, if I measure them, they're probably a little little cooler. They might not be 80, they might be 78. Let me, let me just check here with the, see what our, this is our little meter, see what it says, 77. Yeah, I thought so, 70, it's gonna be a little less. This one says 76, let me check. Okay, I always go to the floor, make it 76. So this one's cooler than this one. Don't know why, but it is. Now a lot of people would say, well that's too cold for rams. Well, maybe it's too cold for rams for breeding, but I have uh, definitely seen a difference between higher temperatures and a relationship with fungus. The higher the temperature, the more likely is fungus, and you'll have fungus widespread throughout your eggs. So I don't recommend that at all, not at all. However, I have had better success at the cooler temperatures and the water doesn't get um, rancid or go bad as easily. So that is an update on these breeder boxes. Um, I, I wanted to uh, share that this evening and I'm not gonna keep you up too long because I know it's Friday night and there's things you wanna see and do. However, um, just to um, give a big shout out big shout out everyone to um, one of our uh, one of my um, subscribers let me see 80 let me go this way because I put it right here I was earlier this week at a um, 
purchase. I, I saw advertised on one of the, the, what do you call it, the, um, so on one of the, um, one of the forums, somebody selling Illuminatus, and I thought, well, you know, I only have a few males, and I need to have some females, so I've been checking around at different local fish stores, and I'm not getting anything. I'm like, nothing, nobody seems to have them. Except maybe there's one place, uh, Shrimp Fever is quite a ways away from me. It's quite a trip to get over there. And um, so they sometimes have them, and I thought they might have some. But at any rate, th this person was selling a bunch, a nice little lot of them. And I said, oh, do you have any females? And there's females in there. And he was selling them rather, rather cheaply. So I said, it's worth my effort. So I, I went over there, and I walked in, and the gentleman, who was it? Sebastian, who comes and joins us on our... Um, live streams. <laughs> so he watches my channel. He looks one look at me and says, "Oh yeah, I'm a subscriber." And I looked at him. I, didn't, of course, you can't see who the subscribers are. Um, there's no video on that, so I didn't know it. But it was like when he said that to me, it, "Wow, you know how great!" But what a nice gentleman. You know, Sebastian uh, has nano tanks and he has shrimp and little fish, and tons of little little. He showed me his his uh, ideas on some of the over-the-back filters he's using on nano tanks very nice and then he goes to the garage and he pulls out a gift and the gift is this so this is the first time using uh, this i can't wait to try it out i've never had one of these it's a floating ring and it's the german uh, type and it comes with this uh, filter it goes through there and then of course it floats but it also has like the sponge filter capability so I can think of a lot of uses for this and I'm anxious to see how it how it functions for me so what a nice gift thank you so much really appreciate it not only because in fact just just for that uh, let's just take a quick look at the Luminatus and see how they're doing if you're out there Sebastian here's your chance to see how they're doing they're, they're doing great um, you see back in there, the blue-eyed rainbow is a gorgeous little fish, but the Luminatus is uh, also. Welcome, John Maud from Australia. Thank you. It must be Saturday morning there for you. It's uh, here Friday night in Toronto, and uh, if you can see here in the back, I should have cleaned this. I didn't realize there's a female right there. But the blue eye, there's the males. They like to parade and show off. Right now they look a little shy. 